I'm gonna trust in the Lord. I'm gonna trust in the Lord. I'm gonna trust in the Lord till I You all can have your, your seats. Uh, hallelujah. Now I know that they, 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 they call this a TM Youth Camp. That's right, Mother, right? TM Youth Camp. And I know some of you are looking at how beautifully seasoned I am. And you say, well, she's, she can't possibly be a camper. Well, I, I asked your, 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 your leader, your founder, uh, uh, Sister Mother Harris, I asked her, could I share just a few words with you? See, really, we're the same age. I don't see how she looks so young and I looks so seasoned but she said yes yes friend by all means share what you know about this unmistakable God so I want to walk you through the life of a camper I can remember when I was just eight years old. And at eight years old, I had already understood what it meant to carry baggage. 
at eight years old, I had been through so many things already, carrying so many weights already that I had gotten used to carrying other people's luggage. You see, I think you remember in 2015 at one of your camps where that young lady over there, she preached and she said, you all had been misdiagnosed. You see, I can remember walking through life, walking through the pews of church, misdiagnosed. But God began to show me that even at a young age, that he was putting a puzzle together. My life would consist of many pieces that he would slowly put together to complete the saved copy of what he had destined me to be. Sometimes we want to ask God, why can't you show me the end from the beginning? Why can't you give me all of my pieces at once? Let me figure out what piece goes where. Just as long as we come to the same final picture. But I began to learn around about 15 years old that he put a sound in me. And I did not know the importance of the sound, but I knew that it had power and influence. At 15, I started to experience some things in my mind and in my emotions. But there again, that unmistakable God had pieces he wanted to add to my puzzle to show me that it was all a part for my good. Then I remember Camp 1997. Do you recall? 1997, Miss Harris, Sister Harris, Mother Evangelist, Dr. Harris came to me and she said, Daughter, will you lead praise service tonight? I said, what you say? She said, Yummy, will you bring the campers in now in service? I said, Of course, I will. Thank you. I stood at the podium and looked out amongst my peers. Then it was a thousand of us and 200 staff. And I stood behind the podium boldly, zealously, excited. And I opened my mouth and said, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a teacher. I'm just excited about God. For 45 minutes, I repeated the same thing in between each song, in between each uh, space of worship. I'm not a preacher. I am not a teacher. I'm just excited about God. The very next morning, I was sitting, eating breakfast with a friend, and this woman walked up to me. She said, yummy, come here. I said, I'm eating my breakfast. Can I come after I get done? She said, yummy, come here. I said, oh, she's serious. Let me get up and move. I went with her. Some of you may know her. Her name is Paulette Foster. And she asked me a question. 
She said, who are you? With boldness, I said, Keisha. She looked at me again with a straight face and said, who are you? I stood there and I thought maybe I didn't fully under, understand the question. I said, I am Keisha Reese. At the time, Davis. She looked at me again, still no expression changed, and she asked, who are you? By now, I was really confused. I said, yummy, as if to say, is that the right answer? She looked at me one last time and asked, but this time she stepped forward. I don't know about you, but there was something kind of bubbling in me. I didn't know what was about to happen. I'm sure there are many of you in this room who've had experiences with Mother Foster, so you know the feeling that I'm talking about. And she asked me again, who are you? I dropped my head and I began to cry and I said, I don't know. She pulled my head up and she looked at me and she said, if you don't know who you are, how can you say what you're not? She then talked to me for quite some time and she laid hands and she prayed. From that day to this, she has walked alongside me, adding pieces to my puzzle. Then at 18, I began to realize that the sound that I made was very important in the kingdom. But then along the way, I turned about 21. And at 21, I went through a phase where I said, I'm grown. Don't look at me like you're not familiar with it. Some of you are struggling with it right now. Are you trying to proclaim you're grown. I do what I want to do. So at 21, I still came to church every week. I still sung in the choir. I still even sang on the praise team. But I did what I wanted to do. I got lost in doing what I wanted to do. And then by 26 years of age... I found myself to be someone's wife and someone's mother. Still broken, still carrying the baggage from way back when I was eight, but now I have other responsibilities. It wasn't until I gave birth to my oldest daughter that I began to understand who I was. Just a short 11 months, pray for me mothers, another baby was on the way. Oh God. Then with my two babies and now my husband, I walked through life fighting and wrestling with God because I still was unsure of who I was. Then came an experience. My husband decided that his tenure as my husband was over. At 31 years of age, I found myself divorced. Still searching and searching for what my place was in the kingdom. All the while this unmistakable God was walking it out with me. Teaching me lessons, adding pieces to my puzzle, helping me understand that it was all working for my good. 
It took me a while to get over the failure of my divorce. So through most of my 30s, I spent a lot of time angry and upset. I downloaded the root of bitterness into my oldest daughter. I taught her how to hide from being open to people because people hurt you. I walked out now years of being misdiagnosed. Even though I had been told you are called to this, God has anointed you for this, I still struggled with yummy and Keisha. Some of you may not have created other personalities or other names for it, but you've split nonetheless. Who you are just to please those that are in church to keep them from praying for you and who you are at home behind closed doors. There were times where I could almost physically walk out and put a mask on and say, hey, yo, he's here today knowing that that eight-year-old was still broken, torn, abused, misused, and unaware. Then I got to my 40s. And I don't know what happened, but a turning point occurred. I had at the beginning of my 40s watched my child lay in a hospital unresponsive due to a seizure. I then watched my other daughter weep over what we did not know would be her future. As I looked at her, God started to speak to me. He asked me a very simple question. Obviously, I respond to questions. He asked me, he said, whose child is she? And for a minute, I had to check myself because my mind started to go back to the labor pains I experienced, and I wanted to claim her as mine. But he reminded me who she belonged to. And in watching her lay there, he reminded me who I belong to. He began to minister to me as I spoke into her ear. You are God's child. And whatever his will may be, it shall be. At the time, there was a group of students, about 300 or so, including the staff, that were praying for her. See, some of you come here and you wonder, why do we gather? Why do we have corporate prayer? Because when you open your mouth in unity, God responds. That group of young people prayed for my daughter. As they prayed, I text her father and said, she won't wake up. He texts me back. He said, they're praying right now. He texts me again. He said, the prayer just ended. I text him back. I said, she just woke up. <laughs> This is when he started to remind me yet again that he was unmistakably God. See, at eight years old, I did not have that word unmistakably. I just had 
God. At 15, I didn't have the word unmistakably. I just had God. At 21, I did not know unmistakably. I just knew God. But he walked me through every piece of my puzzle, showing me that, daughter, there's nothing you've experienced that I haven't been here with you for. I sat down one day and I started to write, what do I know for sure? What do I know for sure? I know for sure that God is dot, dot, dot. Maybe you didn't hear me. I said I know for sure that God is dot, dot, dot. Would you prefer a blank there? Because he has that last word has changed so many times. I'm sure that everyone in this room could fill it with something. So when I asked your leader, could I share the walk through my life? I started to think about what my testimony as a camper would be if someone was to look at my life would they say oh she came to 25 of the 41 so far camps oh I know yummy she used to crack us up in the lunch line every year at camp Oh, I remember when Yummy did this or Yummy did that. First of all, if you're still saying Yummy, I've done something wrong. Because he has called me by name. Yummy wasn't written on my puzzle. It was pieces, but it was pieces that he had to heal. I challenge you today to think about what does it mean over the course of your life to have a relationship with this unmistakable God. When you get to my age, you start thinking about how you want to be remembered. You start to think about what you want people to say for your eulogy. You start to think about what is it that they will conclude about your life. Allow me to share with you the eulogy of a camper. Here lies the body of a T.M. camper. As a lifelong camper, she understood that with God, a promise is a promise. She fully accepted the concept that she needed to just love him back. Especially in the times when he would sweetly say, daughter, let's talk. She fought her fight and served on the front lines as soldier of the day. Got to work while it's light, while it's night. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Keep the faith and fight the good fight. Because we're soldiers of the day and not soldiers of the night. Because we were soldiers of the day and not soldiers of the night. She reinforced the importance of knowing that accept, accept. A man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. In the times when she didn't understand why there was a fight on every side and a test on every turn. She knew that there was yet a message to the beloved. 
And it was Jesus. He's picking up where he left off. That even in this season, when things seemingly don't have a point, God said, it does matter. Because all these things are working for your good. She would gird up her loins, gather herself well before the enemy found a seat in the heart of her emotions, realizing that. The devil can fight, but he can't win. (laughs) So it simply becomes a matter of acceptance. I am a Holy Ghost construction site. And I have a covenant relationship with God. And when there are things emotions, mindsets, and even people that come to tempt me, distract me, destroy me, derail me. God gives me a choice. Deny it or deny me. She chose God and stood firm on his word. So even in her weakness, he reaches out to her and he says, arise, anointed, arise. Have you forgotten that I am Jesus, the last God standing? I am God revealed. And even in this, I grant you a way of escape. Even in this, I grant you grace to escape. So in my finale, when they speak these words over my body, I would leave you this final message. My dear fellow campers, In the face of the enemy, in the midst of doubt and even unbelief, I challenge you to remember that God has not changed his mind. (laughs) Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it is by the word of his power that you have victory. But there are some things you should know. Listen, church, listen. Number one, no matter what the situation, there is an answer. And his name is Jesus. Number two, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So we can conclude that real faith wins. I remind you that to see his face in peace, you must remain. Stand firmly planted and be not swayed by the words and deeds of man. David Hollis taught you, soldiers keep rank. Trust in his word and know that it is all truth. I watched you declare all week it is all truth. And finally, always refer to what you know for sure. And that he is unmistakably God. 